Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And I thought it'd be really fun to show you a couple different crock pot recipes that you can make for dinner and then repurpose them for lunch the next day or the next few days. And when I say repurpose, I'm gonna literally give you one recipe and then give you different things that you can add as like sides, like your carb or your vegetable, make it into a bowl or a salad or a taco or you know things like that so you're not getting bored because the biggest thing with my clients and my followers on Instagram, they all tell me that they cannot eat the same thing every day. They get so bored and for me, I honestly can't relate because my food is so good that I, I can eat it every single day. So with that being said, I'm still gonna take my food my recipes but show you how you can repurpose them make them for lunch and then you can or make them from for dinner I'm sorry and then you can bring them for lunch the next day the next couple days this is great for like your husband or your boyfriend who are like a little bit more picky where they cannot eat the same thing every day so if you make one thing then you can tell them like oh hey throw potatoes instead of rice in your lunch tomorrow and make like a little hash bowl things like that so we are going to start with the very first recipe that i'm making today is sunday and give you like a little backstory i'm going to be recording these clips all throughout the week because i'm going to literally be showing you my dinners and then how i repurpose them the next day for my lunch so this video is going to be like you know i'm not going to be in the same outfit it's going to be all week long so it is sunday today and i menu planned in my rise up journal I menu planned what I was going to have every single day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. And so I thought it would be great to make my crock pot shredded pork recipe for our lunches this week because that means that I can have this shredded pork with rice, cauliflower rice, potatoes, a salad. I can have tacos. I can have lettuce wraps. Brian can make a burrito. He can make tacos. He can make a rice bowl. He makes great fried rice with this pork recipe. So this is gonna be great for Brian as well. And it's so cheap, it's so easy, and it's really low in fat. So what I have here is my crock pot, and I have two, what do I have? I have a, almost three pounds of really lean pork tenderloin in my crock pot right now. There's nothing else in here. If you wanna um, come and take a look, Brian did already sprinkle some garlic powder on here, but I don't have anything else. And so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more garlic powder on top. I'm going to add, and your seasonings can be like whatever you want them to be. Brian and I, we love Asian curry style seasonings. So what I'm gonna use here is an Indian curry seasoning with turmeric, coriander, and lemon. I love that because it's a blend of a bunch of different seasonings. A lot of the time what I also do, even if I'm making like an Asian pork, I will actually season the pork with like a taco seasoning. And I know that you're probably like, why would you make an Asian pork but season it with taco seasoning? Just because it says taco on it doesn't mean it's Mexican. The actual flavors in that taco seasoning bring out really good flavors in the pork when we're making it into a million different dishes. So don't be like, okay, she's using curry, so it has to be an Indian pork. That's not true. It just, I love the turmeric, I love the coriander, um, the garlic powder in here, the onion powder. So I'm just gonna season my pork with that and I'm gonna grab some salt. Salt is so important. And then I grabbed this uh, sauce from Trader Joe's, but you can use anything they have. Like Kikkoman has great stir fry teriyaki, Korean barbecue sauces. Um, we usually will use a Korean barbecue sauce with this, but today I'm gonna be using Trader Joe's soyaki, a unique teriyaki sauce. And as you can see, like it's, I'm not using this whole bottle. This is not, I just want to have like flavor the meat. I'm not gonna like bathe it and have it soak in this in this sauce. And this is gonna also keep it a lot uh, calorie friendly because you're not using too much sauce. So I'm just gonna drizzle the sauce over one side. I'm gonna just flip and repeat. This is something so easy. Your boyfriend, your husband can do this. It's so easy. You're literally just putting pork in a crock pot, seasoning it, throwing some sauce on it, maybe adding a little bit of water um, if you don't have enough sauce or you just wanna make it a little bit more um, if there's not much like liquid in the crock pot, but you really don't need to have the pork sitting in like a ton of liquid. So salt, garlic powder, and then your seasoning of choice. I just love to add extra garlic powder because I think everything is better with garlic. And then the curry seasoning. 
And the reason, again, like why I love this is because of the turmeric. It's really great anti-inflammatory properties and anywhere that I can add any anti-inflammatory ingredient and in herb, I'm going to do it. And then I have a little bit more sauce, so I'm probably, maybe I'll use the rest of it. Might as well use the rest of it because it'll just go to waste if I don't. And hey, Brian, will you come over here and show them? See, I want you to see how much liquid is in here. Like that is more than enough. You don't need it to be like completely bathed in liquid. And that's what it looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the top on and I am gonna put it on high for six hours or you could do low for eight hours. Really, there's no special specific time for this. All you really want is to be able to shred the pork. So high for six hours. I've done it on high for four hours. It's been perfect and shreddable. So if you are in like a pinch and you want to eat it on Sunday for dinner and you're like, oh crap, I forgot. You can totally do this in four hours. Just check it and shred it. So I will catch you guys when this is done. And then um, throughout the week, I will show you how I repurpose it and what I can do with this one protein source. All right, so it is Monday and it's lunchtime. So I wanna show you what I did today for lunch with that crock pot pork that I showed you yesterday. So in here, this big old bowl, I have cauliflower rice that I actually made fresh. Uh, I like to make my own rice cauliflower. All I do is I cut up the cauliflower into florets and I roast it in the oven at 425 for about 15 minutes, 15, maybe 18 minutes until it is fork tender and then I just put it in a blender and pulse it until it's rice. And so I mixed my rice cauliflower with brown rice that I made on the stove top and I love to mix both the rice, the brown rice and the cauliflower rice with cilantro, coriander, lemon and salt. And so that's what the mixture is. That's the base is real rice, brown rice and then cauliflower rice for added volume. And then I have my shredded pork all mixed in. And then I have tomatoes, I have some red bell pepper, and then a ton of shredded lettuce. And so I thought it would be really fun. I was looking for like some type of dressing and I got inspired because I have this huge tub of Greek yogurt that I need to use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my own little crema with Greek yogurt, lemon juice, and buffalo sauce. So let me show you what I do. I'm just gonna like throw it together. And this is gonna add some extra protein into the meal, which is really nice. This is just fat-free Greek yogurt, and I don't need too much, honestly. I don't like it too much, so maybe I'm just gonna do a little, little dollop in my bowl. And then I'm gonna add some buffalo sauce. Some lemon juice. And now I'm just gonna like mix this all together so it's like a big old salad bowl. And that's my lunch. I have a good amount of this little dressing left over so I'm gonna take this to good I love making like my own salad dressings so I'm gonna eat this a ton of volume and that's what I'm talking about I need volume because I'm a hungry girl so I am gonna eat this and I will see you for maybe another recreation of how I utilize my crock pot pork later this week all right here is recipe number two so it is Monday today it is 11 in the morning, I think, and I am going to be making my dinner for tonight in my crock pot. So this recipe, I would recommend if you don't have the luxury of working from home, I would do this on the weekend, maybe on Sunday. And there's a, there's a reason why. So I make everything for this dish in the crock pot. No other cooking is required. So it is a chicken curry recipe with my homemade sauce. And then I also have broccoli and sweet potatoes that cook in the sauce in the crock pot. But 
The reason why I recommend doing this recipe when you maybe on like a Sunday or like a day that you're home is because I cook the chicken first alone, just the chicken and the sauce. And I don't like the chicken in this recipe shredded because I just feel like the chicken gets lost and then you end up eating a lot more sauce and like I really like to prioritize protein. It's very important to me. So what I like to do is I like to take the chicken out before it is cooked too much to the point where it's shredding. I like to take it out where it's just perfectly cooked the chicken so I'm able to chop it up into chunks. So after I remove the chicken, I leave the sauce in the crock pot and then I add the sweet potatoes. I let that cook for about two hours and then I take out the sweet potatoes and then I add the broccoli or you can add the broccoli after about an hour of the sweet potatoes cooking because the broccoli cooks a lot quicker than the sweet potatoes. So if I was to just throw everything in the crock pot at one time, the chicken, the sweet potatoes, and the broccoli, the cooking times of all of those different ingredients are so different that I would have either shredded chicken or I would have the sweet potatoes would be cooked way too much. As time goes on, if I find a more efficient way to do it, then I will let you guys know, of course, but I'm just gonna get right into the recipe and I'm gonna take you through every single step. So I have nothing in my crock pot right now. The two ingredients I'm gonna start with is reduced fat coconut milk. I just got this from Trader Joe's. I use the reduced fat coconut milk just to save some calories. The first time I made this, I did use full fat coconut milk. And then the next time I made it, I used the reduced fat coconut milk and there was no difference in taste. So let me just get a spoon. So I figured if there's no difference in the taste, I might as well save some calories, right? So I have the reduced fat coconut milk and then I have one six ounce can of tomato paste. And I'm just gonna add this whole entire thing in and then I'm gonna take a whisk. I have a whisk and a fork and I just kind of like whisk everything together because the tomato paste is obviously like a thick paste and I wanna break that up so it's just like a little, coconutty tomato sauce in here. Okay, so once that is incorporated, I'm gonna start to add my seasoning. So, what I have here is I have some paprika and I'm gonna do a tablespoon of paprika. I also have some cumin and I'm gonna be doing a tablespoon of cumin. I love cumin. If you uh, watch my channel, you clearly know that. The last recipe I added cumin. And then I also have some Indian curry seasoning that I just got from my grocery store. I'm gonna do a tablespoon of that as well. I am gonna do a, let's see, I have ground coriander. And I really like, when I'm making this, without recording, I'm just pouring the seasonings in here. So I'm just kind of, last time I made it, I did try to measure everything out because I knew this video was coming. So I'm gonna do like a heaping teaspoon of the coriander. And then I'm going to do a whole tablespoon of salt. And then I'm just gonna whisk everything together again just to incorporate all of that seasoning into the sauce. This sauce, I think I said it in my last vlog, Brian and I literally drink it like soup. That is how good this sauce is. I just, like I said, I've been perfecting this recipe. It is so unreal. We could eat this. I'm making this on Monday for dinner. We're gonna have it for dinner Monday and Tuesday and I'm making enough where we're gonna have massive leftovers. 
because it's so good. We could eat it every single meal, every single day. Like I, this could be, if I could live off of one thing, it would be this. I'm telling you guys have to make it. Um, and then I have one yellow onion that I just quartered, um, like just, you know, just quartered. And then I have about five um, garlic cloves. I love garlic. I think it seasons this so nicely. So I'm just gonna mix the garlic and uh, the onions in this sauce. And I'm just gonna submerge the chicken so it is all covered. I have four chicken breasts in here. Um, this, like I said, this is for Brian and I. This is for dinner tonight and dinner tomorrow. And then I just added, you know, if I was only doing dinner for two nights for Brian and I, I'd probably do three chicken breasts um, and then that would be it. But because we love this so much, I'm making a little extra just in case Brian gets hungry at the end of the night and wants another serving. Um, or if I feel like having this for lunch instead of what I meal prepped for lunch. I just like to, I like to cook a little bit more of this just because it is so good and uh, we really, really enjoy it. So it just comes in handy to have a little bit left over. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna show you what this looks like in just a second. I just wanna to explain to you what is gonna go down with this uh, chicken in the crock pot. So I'm gonna set this on high for six hours, but what I'm gonna do is on my phone, I'm gonna actually set an alarm for four hours from now because at the four hour mark, the chicken is going to be perfectly cooked because, because I wanna chop it into chunks, remember? So after four hours, I'm going to pull the chicken out and chop it. And then I'm going to keep the sauce in here and I'm gonna add sweet potatoes. I am going to then cook the sweet potatoes and I'm gonna set an hour timer on my phone. After an hour goes by of the sweet potatoes cooking, I'm gonna grab my broccoli florets and I'm gonna add my broccoli into the sauce with the sweet potatoes. And I'm gonna finish the sweet potatoes for one more hour and then I'm gonna let the broccoli cook for an hour. And then after that, everything is gonna be done. So this is a total cook time of six hours and all you really need to do is just let the chicken go for that, that four hours. And then after the four hour mark, that's when you kind of have another step to do. That's why I recommend you do this like on a Sunday or maybe if you come home on like your lunch break, you can put this together. But I think this would be a really great meal to make on Sunday for Monday. Um, just, you know, my little recommendation. But let me show you what the crock pot looks like just so you can get an idea. All right, so the sauce is all blended together. The chicken is submerged and we are just gonna let this go for four hours. And on the days that I make this, it is so hard for me to not be hungry all day because it smells so good. All right, so I am just going to set, it's 11.10, so I am gonna set a timer for four hours from now, and then I'm gonna pull the chicken out, and I will see you um, when I pull the chicken out, just to show you the next step. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I cannot wait for dinner. So what I do just to make sure that the chicken is cooked all the way through, it's been cooking for four hours. I only have one hand, you guys. Okay, so yeah, I can tell it's cooked just because it's already um, like shredding, not shredding, but you know what I mean, I think. So I'm just gonna try to cut it with one hand. Oh yeah, see it's totally, it's ready. So I'm gonna put the camera down really quick. All right, so I just cut the sweet potatoes up into nice chunks and I'm just gonna stir them into the sauce and they get so nice and tender and so flavorful because we are cooking them in this incredible sauce. They just kind of like soak up the sauce, it's so, so good and sweet potatoes are a little bit more dense so that's why they're gonna take about you know two hours to be perfectly cooked if you were doing you know white potatoes they might cook a little bit sooner um, just because they aren't as dense as sweet potatoes um, I love sweet potatoes in this and then so I'm gonna cover this and then I just I'm cutting the chicken now but I just wanted to show you how tender the chicken is this is a really great way to not overcook chicken in a crock pot is to just not to take it out a little bit sooner so it's not shredded. It's so tender and juicy, oh my gosh. So I'm gonna finish cutting the chicken 
and let this go. And then I'm not gonna show you the broccoli because I'm gonna actually be on the phone with a client, a business client of mine. So in an hour, I'm just gonna be adding broccoli florets to this, cooking it for another hour. So there's only two more hours left of this and then I will show you for dinner tonight. Oh my God, I'm so excited. It is done, babe. Yes. How excited are you? Super excited. Oh my gosh, okay, so I'm gonna take you guys through what I do. So I'm gonna hand the camera to Brian. And what I do is I take all of the sweet potatoes and the broccoli and I put it in its own Tupperware. Now, the reason why I'm not adding it to the chicken is because we just have so much going on. We have so many sweet potatoes. We have a ton of broccoli and I just don't want to like fight to pick through to try to find chicken and stuff like that. So, and honestly, separating it would help you guys as well if you track macros too. Um, so you can separate this from the chicken and then you can weigh out your chicken, weigh out your sweet potatoes, that kind of thing. <laughs> and it's oh, gonna be so amazing. So this, you know, it's too hot and have Brian come over. This is what it looks like with, I mean, there's a lot here. This is going to be dinner for tomorrow as well and we love this so oh, much. Oh, that's great. So we're gonna be eating this all week probably because we love it so much. And I'm just gonna grab my chicken and I want to keep the chicken moist. So I have, there's a lot of sauce that is in with the potatoes and the broccoli right now. And now I'm just gonna like cover the chicken in this sauce. Which was a homemade curry sauce. Way better than buying the canned stuff. And the best dinner you can make in a crock pot is served. You have to add some, I like to sprinkle some salt on top and lemon juice, lemon juice, lemon juice, lemon juice. And I love adding cilantro as well. Um, I didn't add cilantro just because I'm too lazy right now to chop it up, but lemon juice, salt, cilantro makes it perfect. And let me just go through a couple ways that you can recreate this. So I have sweet potato here. You could do butternut squash for a lower carb option, or you can mix butternut squash and the sweet potato, and you can cut up the butternut squash and cook it just like you did the sweet potato, so it's all in one batch if you wanted to, so that's a way to make it lower carb. You can also serve this with rice or cauliflower rice or both and have a mixture of both. You can make this and turn the chicken into a salad. Brian had a piece of naan that we bought at the store and so he made like a little wrap with it with his naan. Um, there's a mil like all of that, you know, you could just repurpose it in all those different ways, but honestly, this is so good. I, we're literally having this for dinner again tomorrow. That's how good it is. So I, my mouth is watering. I cannot control myself. So I'm gonna dive into this, but I would love it if you guys let me know if you're gonna make this. You will not be disappointed. Hey guys, it is Wednesday and it is time for recipe number three for the crock pot. So today I am making spaghetti squash and chicken meatballs for dinner in the crock pot. I have never done this before, so this is another recipe where I'm just gonna be winging it on camera, but it'll just, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be amazing. So what I've already done right now is I have one spaghetti squash, this is just for me, and I just have cut it in half and I am going to season it with just some salt and some pepper. And then I am gonna, I have them um, flesh side down and my crock pot is not that big so I'm just kind of like gonna angle them like that so I can fit in the meatballs. So I wanna make sure you guys can see me. Um, so let me just move some stuff around. Okay, so for my chicken meatballs, I am not going to make like a traditional meatball. I'm not going to add breadcrumbs and egg. I honestly, I don't need all of that. I just want it to be a protein ball. I want it to be a chicken meat ball and I don't need all of the extra stuff in there. So I'm literally just gonna use ground chicken and then some seasonings and then I'm gonna cook it in a tomato sauce in the crock pot. Like I said, never done this before, but all I want is the meat to cook in a crock pot. So 
let's get to it. Um, I, I don't have any measurements here with the seasonings. Um, I'm just gonna eyeball it. And the, what I, I didn't buy anything special for this recipe. I'm just gonna use what's in my cabinet. I have garlic powder, onion powder, and then this 21 seasoning salute from Trader Joe's. You can really use any you know seasoning blend. And then I love spice, so I'm gonna add a little bit of red pepper flakes to the tomato sauce when everything's cooking, because I love that spicy sauce. So I'm gonna start with just some onion powder, and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on. Maybe about a teaspoon of each seasoning. Some garlic powder, I love me some garlic powder. And then this 21 seasoning salute, which just has a bunch of different seasonings and herbs. Um, uh, celery seed, bay leaf, parsley, basil, thyme, rosemary, oregano, like literally ever 21 seasonings in here. So I am gonna add some salt. Cannot forget to salt it, the most important part. Nice big pinch of salt. And then I'm just gonna use my hands and mix it all together. And if you're tracking your macros, you can weigh out the meatballs so they come out perfect little, you know, two ounces or something like that. But for me, I don't track, Brian doesn't track. I'm just eating in balance. So uh, for those of you that are just eating more balanced, you can just make, I'm gonna make like a nice big meatball and maybe give myself like two, maybe two and a half tonight. Um, let's see how, even, how many I get. But I'm gonna make some nice big meatballs. All right, you just wanna wash your hands after you make the meatballs. I got four big meatballs and then one kind of like medium-sized meatball, and that's gonna be perfect for dinner tonight. And just so you guys know, I will be eating the spaghetti squash, and Brian is gonna be having some real pasta, but I wanted to show you a lower carb option. Usually, I don't personally eat spaghetti squash because it is so low carb, and I eat higher carb um, just because I have a lot of muscle, my body needs the carbs, so if I do, eat a, a pasta it is either gluten-free pasta or like a red lentil pasta um, but today I'm gonna show you some quick and easy spaghetti squash so I am going to grab my crock pot and I am just going to add some of the sauce to the crock pot right now and create a little bed for the meatballs I'm just gonna make sure that there's a little nice bed of sauce in here. And I'm just like, you can see, I'm just like angling right now the spaghetti squash just so I have a place to put the um, chicken meatballs. So I'm gonna show you, don't worry. And now I'm just gonna place the meatballs right inside on the sauce, on top of the sauce. All right, and I'm gonna add a little bit more salt just on top of the meatballs make sure you're seasoning your food i want to show you what this looks like before i top it with sauce just so you guys can see what's going on inside okay so that is what it looks like i don't know um like i said i've never done this before i haven't looked up a recipe so i am just gonna see how this works out so i am just going to top the meatballs with some more sauce and I'm just gonna leave it like that. And I want, so now everything is covered and I want more sauce in here because if I, if I wanna top the spaghetti squash with more sauce tonight when I eat it, I wanna make sure I have some sauce left over. So all I'm gonna do now is just sprinkle a little bit of red pepper flakes on top of everything. This is optional. I really, really love like a spicy sauce. So that's why I'm doing it. And then I am gonna cook this. Um, you know, I'm making this up, so I think high for six, uh, four, to, four to six hours is perfect. I know the chicken doesn't need more time than that, so I'm gonna do on high for four hours, and um, at the four hour mark, I'll just take a fork and check to see if the spaghetti squash is shreddable. Um, and I will show you what it looks like at the end of four hours. Honestly, 
I'm not sure how it's gonna look. So your first look will be my first look. So we're all just gonna do a prayer circle together and pray for the best. But there's really no way that you can mess this up. It's just spaghetti squash and some ground chicken. Um, but it's gonna taste amazing tonight. And then when I do have this tonight, I am going to add some steamed broccoli that I actually already have steamed in the fridge. But if you wanted to, you could even add broccoli to the sauce when there's like an hour, 45 minutes left of the cooking time. So you can cook the broccoli right in here and have it be all submerged in the sauce. That would be really yummy. So that's an option as well. So I will see you guys in a couple hours. All right guys, so it is about to be dinner time soonish. Sorry, my dogs are going crazy. Brian just got home. But I wanted to show you what it looks like. I It's hard to do this with one hand. Um, but all I'm gonna do, you can see clearly that the spaghetti squash is totally done. The meatballs are perfectly done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the spaghetti squash out of the crock pot and I'm gonna shred it and I will show you the finished product. It's so easy, literally my dinner is just, the spaghetti squash is done, the meatballs are done and then I do have some broccoli that I'm just going to toss in the sauce as soon as I take the, the spaghetti squash out and I'm gonna toss the broccoli just to kind of warm it up and uh, to get it all covered in the yummy sauce and then I'm just gonna plate it. And I am making Brian some pasta right now and we are gonna have a beautiful meatball pasta dinner. Italiano dinner. Italiano dinner. Yum, look at this. Oh my God, the meatballs turn out so good. Look how huge they are. And then I just literally tossed my pre-steamed broccoli that was in the, in the fridge. I just threw it in the crock pot with the sauce to heat it up and to get it all nice and saucy. Oh my gosh. If I had some fresh basil, it'd be perfect. All right, you guys, please let me know if you liked this vlog. It was quite the task to put together these three recipes and film them over the week. But if you guys like this type of content, I will absolutely do it for you. I just wanna help provide recipes and ideas to just make dieting a little bit easier for you, um, especially for like the busy person who always thinks that they don't have enough time to cook. Well now you have no excuse because of these amazing crock pot meals. So I'm gonna dig into dinner. I'm gonna put Brian's dinner together because the pasta is done. Please comment below and like this video so I know that you want more of these types of vlogs and recipes and content from me. And if you wanna see more, do not forget to subscribe. I will talk to you guys soon. See you in the next one, bye.